and let's look at this one half x squared. What's your shape? Parabola. What tells you a parabola? The square. The square tells you it's a parabola. This one half, though, since this is being multiplied times that x squared, what's going to happen here? What is it? What does that do? Is it a is it a stretch or is it a compression? It's a compression. What tells you it's a compression? The one half, it's less than one, right? So it's going to be compressed. It's going to make it look wider, right? Because in your mind, you're thinking, oh, it looks wider. But in my mind, the way I see it is that you are compressing that. Right? Like if you were to watch something that was standard definition on a widescreen TV, right? Well, they have to kind of squish it down so that people are like, oh, I don't remember. I don't know. Realize that she looked that, that big. If you look in your graphing calculator, it's not a perfect square, right? It's wider than it is tall, so when you look at the graphs there, things look a little bit squished, just a little bit. One more? No, oh, you're holding back up. So the one half, now this is very, you have to be very, very close attention to how this one half works. Your vertex is at zero, zero, because you did move up, down, left, or right. Now, even though we didn't move up, down, left, or right, I'm still going to put my new set of axes here because I want you to be familiar with doing it this way. Zero, one, two, three, four, and so on. Now, this is a little more difficult because like you were saying, Cliff, I can use this guy as a slope only when this piece is what? Absolute value. Absolute value. What's the order of operations here? What comes first in terms of what's being done to the x? Exponent comes before multiplication with one half, you'll agree? So, when I'm here at one, if you were to plug one into that, you would square it, right? You square it to get one, but then what's half of one? One half. What's two squared? Four. Two squared is four. What's half of four? Two. So do you see how you've got a compression by a factor of a half? So we have four. Two, three is nine. We're still going to go with three. No, square root of three nine. is nine. What's nine. half of nine? Oh, 4.5. Half of nine is four and a half. What's the square? Uh, what's the square? Did we say square root? No, we didn't say square root, did we? Oh, whatever. What's the square of four? Sixteen. What's half of sixteen? Eight. Eight. So your next point is going to be right here. Okay. Now reflect these points so you don't have to do the math again. There's no need in redoing all this. We can just copy these points over. You guys with me on that? So your normal parabola will be going through these x marks right here. But I'm not going that steep. I'm not so steep because that one half factor. I actually like graphing one half x squared because it's a little bit easier to graph and get that parabolic shape. It stands out a little bit more. I like how you guys just sit and stare at me as I graph parabolas. And you're just like amazed. Alright, so there's your x squared. You can see that I'm definitely not as steep as that. So I'll put my one half in front of that, and there we go. That is That's what? I know, uh, pro parabolas are really, uh, okay. you know, and maybe because I'm a, <laughs> I'm a math nerd, I, I, I think it's, there, there's, there's a certain beauty about, not even just this, but about just all mathematics, that sometimes we don't see that, we get caught up in our own. <laughs> but you are getting it because you got me. <laughs> that means everything. Let's look at 2x squared minus 5. I'm going to change this up a little bit, throw in a couple of things for you. See if you guys can interpret what you see here and figure out what needs to be done, what needs to be applied. But before we can apply anything, you have to know the what. Shape. shape. What's my shape for this function? Parabola. parabola. It's a parabola. Now, what can be done to the parabola? Because normal parabola would just be x squared. 
What have I done? You shifted it five to the right. Whoa, 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 hold up, hold up. <laughs> you, know, so is, you, you guys basically, when you all talk at the same time, you're doing everything to this, but you're not. What does that coefficient here mean? That means we're going to have a vertical stretch, right? Yes. It's going to be growing vertically faster because of the two. What about this minus five? Which way? Now, is this being done inside your squaring function or outside of it? Outside. And when it's outside, it's a vertical shift. And you do exactly what you see. So what do you see here? So that means you're going to do what? You're going to go down five. Because see, this minus, listen, this minus five doesn't apply until after you've done all the squaring stuff. So you would do the squaring stuff, and then you would pull it down five. Okay. So let's see how that looks with my graph. So question to you, where is your vertex? Zero. Okay, that's one of the coordinates. What's the other coordinate? Zero, negative five. Zero, negative five, right? And you know what? You might have to write that every time you're doing one of these problems. My vertex equals, in this case, zero, negative five. So I'm starting down here. Now watch what I do. I mean, I feel like I've been doing this all day, so hopefully you've kind of caught on to it by now. That's my new set of axes. We're going to build everything else from this. Have I done a T-table today other than when I was introducing the basic shape to these graphs? No. No. And you don't need to do it either. Okay? Now, you may find people that disagree with me on that, but you've got to find out that if you get this, this is the easiest way of graphing. Now, here's what you need to understand. This down five, I've already used. You don't need to worry about being down five anymore because you have to replace. Are you with me? It's from that vertex that you're going to get the rest of your points. And it's going to be using the two as well. What's one squared? One. One. But it's not going to be there. Where is it going to be? Uh, plus two. It's going to be up two right. from that, right? Because I'm doubling that. It's a factor of two in front of that. What's two squared? Four. Two squared is up four, but this two here tells me I'm going to do what with that? I'm going to multiply times 2, so I'm going to be up 8 from here. So let's see, that was 4, and here's 8. So from here, from the my new x-axis, so to speak, to up here, it's, it's 8. What's 3 squared? 9. Nine. 3 squared is 9, so it would be right here. What's 9 times 2? 18. I don't think 18 is going to fit on here, do you? Oh, well, you put on here what you can. But I do want you to know this, though. 3 squared was 9, and 9 times 2 is going to be 18 somewhere up here, right? Mm -hmm. That means that if you get to this point and you kind of cross over here, you can't cross this guy because you're aiming up here. Don't aim out here. You aim for that point was supposed to be. Even if he's not on your graphing window, you're still aiming like you're going to go there. Are you with me? That would just go straight up in the air from that. And it almost looks like it's just going. Yeah. Having that factor of two in front makes this very, very difficult to grab. But does that mean I'm going to give up? No. No. But notice, I'm not going to cross this guy because I'm aiming straight up here. I'm going to get up there eventually, something like this. Okay. If you can get one half, you can get the other half. For a lot of you, you're going to have to practice graphing these parabolas. Make them pretty, okay? Because if your parabolas are not pretty, then, I don't know, maybe you don't get as many points. Mr. Craig. What? If, you're not, if they're not pretty, that means they're not accurate. How do you define pretty? <laughs> well, here's what you're going to do to help yourself. You're going to plot every single point possible, every single nice, pretty point possible. And then you're going to nicely sketch out and so that you go through those points. Because <laughs> notice what I'm not doing here. What I'm not doing is this. I'm not making one 
motion like that, because I know that if I do that, I'm probably going to be on. So I just, a little piece at a time, just kind of sketch it out, and then I can go back and I can smooth it out once I have that, that shape there. Now, oh wait, I'm recording this. You're fine. <laughs> you gotta watch those infantile responses. You're a little crooked. <laughs> so, there's x squared. But I took this guy and I put a 2 in front of it, right? So see how it stretched it? Made it a little bit skinnier? And then what did I do? <laughs> and there I go. Oh, yeah, that is crooked. That's horrible. Oh, and goodness. What's Joe be doing on our papers? <laughs> <laughs>